All right, it's that time again to build another battery. Let's go to the bench. All right, following in our series of open source projects with our LEV60 cells. These are the cells that uh, we've been pushing for a little while and we've made this. It's a 4S battery, it's 12 volts. And then we've also uh, made a uh, eight cell version, right? So what we did last time is we configured them in this position right here. So eight cells, four like this, four like that. And what we call this configuration was a fat because it's kind of, you know, it's kind of squarish and, and fat. Uh, the other configurations that you can do are longer. So that's why this is the fat. So this is the long, right? You could also configure them like this, eight cells, just uh, zigzagging all the way back. And what you have to do in order to keep them at 4S, you have to tie two of them in parallel. So two negatives here, two positives there, then connect these to the next ones, and then connect these ones to the next ones, and then connect these ones to the next ones, and then the uh, other terminal is gonna be here, right? So that's what we're gonna do today. And again, if you're new to this series of videos, these are all open source projects, and the reason why we can do this is because we have a sponsored PCBWay.com. More on them later. All right, so let's pull up our drawing app here. Uh, what you're seeing here is the first iteration, and there's several iterations, uh, six to be exact, that we've done. So I'm going to show you the whole evolution of this project, right? So let's look at the 3D version of this. Again, the reason why I'm not showing you from the ground up is because we've drawn these before, right? Those, those little four uh, cell bus bars, PCB projects that we've shared before, I, all I did was just uh, copied and paste two of those and then merged them, right? And then just make sure that the distance between these and these were the same and then reran uh, the copper traces and stuff, right? But this is what it looks like. Uh, and I'm gonna point out certain things like this uh, is the balancer Let's see, this is the balancer connector, right? And it's right here so that you have a little cable and then you put it right here on the center. These right here, these pads were uh, designed to, so that you can put a, um, a terminal block in here that is made out of aluminum and it has like uh, holes on one side that it can carry up to like high quality two gauge cable and then the other side is uh, four American wire gauge and then the other one's just 2O or 1L or zero gauge. I think that's what some people call it, depending on what brand of cables it's. So that's what these, these exposed things are. But the thing was that once we started doing these and then um, we started testing them, this copper traces that are here, there's one on the top here, one on the bottom, it was just not enough to carry the 1200 amps and 800 amp continuous, right? So they're getting too hot. So what we ended up doing is was just designing a an aluminum plate that would go on top of this. And we realized that by just having a, an eighth inch aluminum plate that goes there, that that did the job, right? So, so you, yeah, you could, the copper helps here, these two, but then, you know, with the aluminum plates. And, and so then this uh, exposed uh, plate here is not no longer necessary. And so that's why we changed that. That's why there's other versions of this. Uh, also, this was kind of in the way when we made a custom a steel box enclosure for this battery, right? And so we had to move that, right? So, so this is version one, I think. And then let's open up the other one here and then we'll see that. So this is 1.2. Let's look at 1.2 there. So here's 1.2, I took down that. Uh, I made these longer because it needed more exposed area here when you were people that are gonna use these without having uh, the, uh, you know, the, the, the aluminum, the terminal block here, right? So if you're just gonna use ring terminals, then you need a little bit more exposed area here. So that's what we did that. Uh, then I started adding these holes right here so that we could move this, uh, plate all the way closer to the bottom of the cell and then we it leaves more room on top of this PCB to put really thick quarter inch aluminum because these need to be quarter inch because all the energies has to squeeze through this area right here 
and then right here, and then right here, right? So, so then that's why we did those holes. But those holes turn out to not be exactly the right size. They need to be elongated like these ones. And so I kind of didn't see that coming. And so then we had to change it. So that's why we did version, uh, what is this? Uh, 1.2. This is 1.2. Let's see. What's the difference of 1.2? Let's close this one here. Here it is. I think I made these ones longer. I think... Um, I don't know exactly. The changes are minor enough here that I can't even tell between this one and the last one. Let's try the next one, 1.3, yeah, 1.3, here we go, here we go, again, changes are minor, maybe just some of the text, I don't remember at this point what I did, all right, so let's skip one, 1.5, and then let's look at that one now. Okay, so 1.5, we start seeing some changes. You see, I elongated those holes here. Um, I moved this connector. That was a very important thing to do because now this board sits closer to the cell. The cell edge is right here, and so it, it would... Um, it might short out, right? And so I moved that just from, it used to be in line with this line right here with this edge. So I moved it in there and that gave me a little bit more room so that it wouldn't short out. And then here is where I change this connector from the very edge here. I moved it in also to prevent some uh, obstruction when the metal box goes in there, right? Um, let me see. Other than that, I think that's it. Let's look at the last one. And here's number six, 1.6. Okay, so here's 1.6. And yeah, I think all these, I think I, I just ended up changing these right here, getting the, the, the correct size. Um, and this is the final one. This is the one that we're going to see right now. We're going to put it together. So, you know, this is very simple. Um, these are the traces, right? These are the layers of copper. So this is the top layer. It connects the two cells here and then two here, but then it connects those two to these two. And then the same thing here, connects these four together, connects these four together and then connects these two together. And then these are the outlines of the aluminum bus bars that we're going to put, uh, that, we've, that we've made, designed, and you know fabricated, and then we're gonna use them here. And so these lines right here are gonna, it's just to help you uh, show you where they're gonna go. If you happen to put these in the wrong place, like if you put it here and then here, it would be a massive short when you put this one in here. So it's very important that you pay attention when you're assembling this and following these, uh, these markings right here when you're putting your battery together right so let's go to the bench here is our board uh white is to distinguish all these big 148 amp hour uh 12 volt ones and so all you have to do now is take your eight cells like this and rearrange them right two negatives two positives two negatives two positives two negatives two positives two negatives two positives and then you can put it in there. This is very, very simple. And then it ends up being like this. All right, so here we go. This is our uh, bus bar here. The last thing to do is to put the D-shaped ones here, right? And those are gonna go here, and they're gonna go here. Now, there are two types of nuts. These ones have serrated bottom edges right there, and these ones are skinny. You're gonna have to use these skinny ones on these because you need there's just not enough room, right? There's not enough threads sticking out here and we have to use these uh, bus bars as quarter inch. On these ones here, no problem. These can be eighth inch because there's several pathways to deliver the current and so they stay cool when this ones get hot because you have to squeeze everything through here, right? So these 
Once right here, you'll use this big one so it's a serrated end so that they don't come back, they don't come out. They don't back out. And you just put them in here, here. Okay, so one of the things that you have to do, uh, if you wanna use these like this, all you have to do is just uh, put ring terminals in here and then you can use them like that, right? But if you want the terminal blocks, we have a link to those uh, in the description of this video on the, on the project, you know, on the project page. There's gonna be description, there's gonna be links to all of these parts, right? Where to get these, where to buy these, where to buy the cells, the connectors, all this stuff, right? And so also the terminals. I don't have any terminals right now. We ran out, so that's why I can't show them to you. Uh, but you can put them in there. And you can watch some of the older videos, the other ones that I've made uh, on the other versions of these batteries. And it, you, I show you how to put these together in here, right? So then the other thing that you have to do is just connect your balancer here. And, you know, again, I explain on the other videos, you have to back out these little screws and open the holes and then stick them in there. And then you can tighten them. And then these... Uh, Let's do that right now. You just connect that in there. And then, uh, yeah, that's how you put your balancer. It's very, very simple. Now, the other thing that we have for this, right? You could use this as is. If you want to mount, we have options for mounting. These are called compression plates. And you put them like this and they put some all thread in here and it compresses the batteries. And then it has a flange that you can then use to screw these into your vehicle or into your project, into your cabinet wherever you're putting these, right? These are mostly used for car audio. And so, because they can push quite a bit of amps and car audio industry, uh, uh, they need this kind of amperage, right? And so these are really great, affordable way to put uh, and secure your batteries into your project, right? But we also have a custom built battery uh, enclosure that's all metal and it kind of completes this whole thing. Let me show you how that works. So this is the box. It comes as a kit like this. It comes all put together, assembled. What you have to do is you have to remove the top by removing all these screws and then you remove one of these sides. You remove like this one right here. You take off all the screws and then you take one of these ones too. It's just easier that way. And what you do is you put your battery in there, slide it in here and now you can put this again now you could put this put the screws back on and you put this one on and now that we have this now you have to take these off and then put the uh, terminal blocks with the little riser there's a quarter inch riser that goes in here and the reason why we need that is to put this in here, right? I will make a more detailed video on how to put together this entire box. But this is just for this battery right here. And this is 148 amp power, 12 volt, 1200 amps for 10 seconds. It's a very, very powerful battery. And this is for your car audio setup, right? And so once you do this, then it becomes like a finished plug and play battery that has a, uh, a BMS thing or a balancer in here that you could see what it's doing. You can put this in your car. All of a sudden, you don't have access to all the stuff so that nothing can touch it and short out. All the only exposed things are going to be the main terminals here. And then you can put all your cables in there up to 2.0 high quality welding wire, right? If you're using cheaper, less uh, quality cable, then it might be like 1.0 or zero gauge or whatever to fit in those things, right? But there's, there's several uh, inputs to put in here to put several cables. Uh, if you have several amps, then that's uh, what you use those for in there, right? Um, there's also some text in here that will show you exactly how this goes. So anyways, this is an open source project sponsored by PCB Way. That's why PCB Way, it's right here on the, uh, on the PCBs. Uh, and you can buy all these uh, at jack35.com. And then you can go and you can even get them cheaper if you go to pcbway.com. Order the boards yourself right and order all these parts yourself so that you don't have to pay me you could just all get them um from the source and that way you can make these battery in a most affordable way that you can right so again this is a very professional very high power battery can be used for anything that's 12 volts but uh it's mainly used for audio because it could do because that's who needs that much power at this low voltage right of 12 volts now you could build several of these and connect them in series uh that definitely is a possibility you could do that um 
Uh, I'm not going to stop anyone from doing that. But obviously, I, we do have other projects that will be able to do that. Like that one for there, for example, that's a 48 volt. And then we will have a 36 volt uh, PCB bus bar uh, that we're also going to release, right? And so wait for that video. If you need something other than 12 volts, yeah, stay tuned because we have PCBs for that. These batteries can be configured into any voltage pretty much that you need, right? Even all the way to 96 volts nominal, which I am gonna put with those boxes in there and we're gonna test them on that car right there. We're gonna even run a full car on all of these batteries right here. These are very powerful and then very versatile. You can use them in all kinds of projects. All right, thank you for watching this video. Remember, you could buy these already made, ready to go, or you can totally DIY these, buy all the parts and then you know, assemble it and put it together, right? Uh, either way, you're going to save a lot of money because this is a very high performance battery that will cost upwards of $1,000. But depending on how you buy it, it, it will dictate how much you save. Definitely the cheapest way is to do the DIY version and you buy all the parts yourself and then put it together, right? But if you're watching this video all the way to the end, that means that you're either interested and you're about to do this. Congratulations for joining the DIY movement. This is the best way to go. This is the best way to learn about new things, right? In this case, batteries and battery building. And so if you have any questions, put it in the comments of this video and our whole community. We also have a Facebook community, Jehu's DIY Powerwalls, in which we talk about all these batteries and stuff. There's a lot of people that are talking in there. And so if you have a question, you post it in there, whether I answer it or sometimes other members of the community will answer it, right? So again, thank you for watching. Thank you, PCB Way, for sponsoring this video. We'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.